The word polygon refers generally to closed figures with straight sides. Uh, here are some examples of polygons. And we've talked about some polygons before, but the word polygon is a very general idea. Uh, the, the figure can have as many sides as we'd like, as long as it's a closed figure with straight sides. Now, the, uh, the names for various polygons depend upon the number of sides. A three-sided polygon is called a triangle. We've looked at some before. A four-sided polygon is generally a quadrilateral. A five-sided polygon is a pentagon. And you can see the other names here, and they're written in your book for reference. But we go all the way from uh, three sides to ten sides here. Notice the eight-sided polygon is an octagon. Now, a lot of times when we are talking about pentagons, hexagons, heptagons, and so on through the decagons, we talk about regular uh, polygons of these types. Now, a regular polygon is a polygon that has all sides of equal length and all angles of the same size. So when we talk about a regular octagon, for example, it's just the shape of a stop sign, you see, and, uh, and that kind of thing. Now, a regular uh, four-sided uh, polygon, a regular four-sided polygon, would be a very special kind of quadrilateral. It would be the square, you see, because the square has all four sides equal and equal angles. Well, let's talk about some, some triangles. Uh, we're going to uh, talk generally about some triangles and some quadrilaterals here and just kind of put them into categories. Now, we've talked about the right triangle before, but an isosceles triangle is a triangle in which two of the sides are the same length. And I'll use this little notation for uh, these two sides being the same length. And it turns out also that the angles opposite those sides are the same measure. So these two angles are the same when those two sides are the same and vice versa. An equilateral triangle is a triangle in which all the sides are the same. So all three sides would be the same length in an equilateral triangle. And it turns out that all three angles are the same size. You know, we can, uh, we can even figure out the size of those three angles. No matter how big the equilateral triangle is, it can be real big like this or real small. But if it's an equilateral triangle and all the angles are the same measure, you see, then we can figure out that measure. Well, let's see, how do we do that? Well, let's see, the three angles together are 180 degrees. So 3 into 180 would be 60. So every one of these angles would be 60 degrees. A scalene triangle is a triangle which has uh, no two sides are the same length. An acute triangle has all angles which are acute angles. Now, I may have drawn this scalene triangle that is uh, also acute. So uh, these have overlapping possibilities. An acute triangle, all the angles are acute angles. Well, this isosceles triangle that I drew up here is an acute triangle. An obtuse triangle has one angle, which is an obtuse angle. That obtuse angle is right here. Let's talk about some quadrilaterals. We talked about some quadrilaterals earlier. We, we talked actually about three of them. I, I think the square, the rectangle, and the parallelogram. Uh, but let's, uh, let's talk generally about quadrilaterals. We have, um, and you know, these are just four-sided figures. That's all there is to it. But a parallelogram has opposite sides parallel. And it's also the case that the, if these two sides are parallel, those two sides are parallel. It's also the case that these two sides are of equal length. Those two sides are of equal length. And it's also the case that these two angles are the same measure, and those two angles are the same measure. So there are a lot of little characteristics involved in parallelograms, and the same is true for all of these others. The rectangle uh, is, you know, I, I mentioned that a parallelogram could be thought of as a special kind of, of rectangle. That is, it's just a rectangle which is kind of leaning over for the parallelogram. Well, we could think of it the other way around. We could think, well, the rectangle is just a special kind of parallelogram. It's a parallelogram in which one of the angles is a right angle. You see, because after all, we have all of these characteristics. Opposite sides are parallel, you see, and opposite uh, uh, sides are equal to each other. Opposite angles are equal to each other. But more than that, all of the angles are equal to one another. They're all right angles, you see, for the rectangle. And a square. A square is just, we know what a square is. All the sides are of equal length. All of the, uh, uh, the opposite sides are parallel. 
making it a parallelogram, you see, so it's a special kind of parallelogram. We could think of it like that. And all of the angles are right angles as well. A rhombus can be thought of as a leaning square because all of the sides are of equal length. Now, it's a parallelogram as well. The opposite sides are parallel. Opposite angles are equal to one another. Uh, but the important characteristic is that all the sides are of equal length. Now, trapezoid is a special kind of quadrilateral in that it is one where opposite, one pair of opposite sides are parallel. So the, in this case, in this drawing, the top side and the bottom side are parallel with one another. But notice that the left and right sides are not parallel with one another. So this is the trapezoid. Now, a lot of times with trapezoids and, and other figures as well, we're interested in a height measurement. And we're not going to talk a great deal about that in this course, but the height is the distance, the shortest distance from the bottom side to the top side or from one parallel side to the other parallel side if it's drawn a little differently. But this then would be the height. This is an isosceles trapezoid. Now, isosceles was a word used when we talked about a triangle which had two equal sides. Well, here, for the isosceles trapezoid, we have the trapezoid notion with these two sides parallel. And we have the isosceles notion in that these two sides are equal to one another. So this side is equal to that side. And it makes for some other characteristics as well. It'll turn out that these two angles are equal to one another, and these upper angles will be equal to each other. You see, those two are equal to each other, and those two are equal to each other for the isosceles trapezoid. Now, notice we're just talking about an awful lot of vocabulary here, and uh, now let's talk about some calculations that can be made. One type of calculation is to, to figure out the perimeter of various figures. Now, the perimeter is simply the distance around the outer edge of a figure. And I'm going to talk to you about some formulas, but we don't have to memorize a lot of formulas. Or I don't think we need to, to feel like we ought to memorize a lot of formulas. You want to learn this by concept. And the concept, the general idea is, it's just the distance around the outer edge. And if a formula can be conjured up from that idea, then all the better. That's just fine. But for a triangle, you know, we're just adding the lengths of the sides. So a formula is just, well, what formula would add the sides? And that's kind of the way you think about it. The perimeter is air, uh, side A plus side B plus side C. You see, and that's all there is to it. Just add the sides for the triangle. Now, for a square, you're adding the sides, but all of the sides are the same length. You see, so if we had a square like this, it would be, and this is S, then all sides are S. And I'll go ahead and label them for emphasis here, but it would be S plus S plus S plus S. Oh, that's 4S. You see, so we could come up with this as the formula for the perimeter of a square. Perimeter is four times the length of a side. Now, for the rectangle, in a, in a very similar way, we could come up with this as the formula for the perimeter of a rectangle. Now, we come up with it like this. You think about a rectangle, and this is the length and that's the width. Well, the upper side is also L, and this side is the same as the right side, it's W. So if we're talking about perimeter, the distance around the outer edge, it would be L and W and L and W. Oh, in that listing, I mean, if we're writing L plus W plus L plus W, you see we have a couple of Ls. One L plus one L, oh, that's two L. And W plus W, that's two W. You see, so we could come up with our formula just by the nature of finding perimeter. And that's the, kind of the way I'd like you to, to remember it, because your memory can go through that process very, very quickly. You think about, well, it's just the distance around the outer edge, and what are we adding? And then what we're adding gives us the formula that we need to come up with. All right, let's use the formula a little bit, these formulas, a couple of them, to uh, make the calculation for perimeter. If we have a square here that is five feet on each side, then to calculate the perimeter, we can do one of several things. We can, we can forget the, uh, the formula, and we can just say perimeter is side plus side plus side plus side, and replace the s's with fives, you see, and then and write an answer. We don't have to use the prescribed formula here if we have the general idea for perimeter. 
All right, but the formula that we have come up with, since all those sides are the same, the perimeter is equal to 4 times s, and s is 5. 4 times 5 is 20, so the perimeter is 20 feet. Here we have a rectangle. We want to calculate the perimeter. Once again, we uh, can use the perimeter formula. We should if, if uh, we can conjure it up and, and think about where it, it comes from and so forth. But I don't want you to sit down and try to memorize a lot of formulas. You understand it from, you come up with it from your understanding of the nature of perimeter. Okay. So we have this. And perimeter then is 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. Now, I want to emphasize that the first two steps in using a formula are predetermined. I think we mentioned this before, maybe more than once. But when using a formula, you always, always write the formula down. You don't try to replace within it as you are writing it down. You write the formula. And in the next step, you replace letters with numbers, and that's all you do. You never, ever try to make calculations or perform operations in this second step. So these are very predetermined kinds of steps in using a formula. All right, now we go through and we perform indicated operations. 2 times 6 is 12. 2 times 3 is 6. Then adding 12 and 6, we get 18. The unit is meters, so 18 meters then would be the perimeter of this figure. The distance around a circle is not called perimeter, it's called circumference, circumference of a circle. Now, the calculation is made using a very important uh, number in mathematics. It's, it's a number called pi. Pi is a never-ending and never-repeating decimal number. And, uh, and I'll show you how it, it, uh, mathematicians came up with it in just a minute. But the formula for calculating circumference is based upon the diameter. It is so many times the diameter, and it turns out to be pi times the diameter. Now, let me show you how that works. It, it's this, that if you have a circle, and here is its diameter. Suppose we take the diameter and we lift it off of the circle, and we kind of make it flexible and we lay one end of the diameter right here and we're going to kind of lay it on the edge of the circle. So let's lay it on the circle and oh, let's say that it lays on the circle and it comes to about right O here. And then we pick it up and we put it on the circle again and it lays on the edge of that circle and it comes out to be oh, about right O here. And then we pick it up and we put it on the edge of the circle again and we're just trying to see how many of these diameters it takes to go all the way around. All right, we lay it on again, and it, it'll go about to right here. Just about makes the whole circuit, but not quite. So it takes a little more than three of these diameters to go all the way around the circle, to, to complete the circumference of the circle. So we can say then that the circumference is a little more than three uh, diameters, or three times the diameter. Now, a more accurate... Uh, approximation for the number of times that the diameter will lay on to the edge of the circle is this. The circumference is 3.14 times the diameter. And the exact value is pi. You see, this is the number of times that the diameter will lay along the edge of the circle. Now, as I say, this, this number is a never-ending and never-repeating decimal. So when we use it, we need to round off somewhere, and a good approximation, a good place to round off is right here. We can use 3.14 as the approximation for pi. But the formula for finding circumference is circumference is pi times diameter. Now, a variation of the formula is, is this, because you know that diameter, you see, thought bubble. Diameter is really 2 times the radius. So if the diameter is 2 times the radius, imagine replacing this with 2r and put the 2 over here and the r right here. So the circumference is 2 pi r, and that's an equivalent formula to this. Let's use the formula in a problem. Suppose we want the circumference of this circle. Now notice the radius is given here as 18 centimeters. We really have a choice, though, in how we want to work the problem. 
we can decide to use the formula which involves diameter or we can use the formula which involves radius. If we use the formula involving radius, we use 18. If we use the formula involving diameter, we need to figure it out. Now to figure it out, remember the diameter is twice the radius, so we would have to double 18 to get 36 for the diameter of the circle, and then we could use pi times diameter. But since we're given radius, let's go ahead and use the formula C equals 2 pi r. So we would have C equals 2 times 3.14 times the radius of 18. And to be technically correct, what I should do, and it doesn't matter if you forget this, but what I should do here is say that the circumference is approximately this amount because I've rounded pi a little bit, you see. So I, I have approximated pi to 3.14. Now when you multiply all this out, you find that the circumference is approximately 113 and 4 hundredths units. And the unit is centimeters. So here's our circumference. Sometimes we're asked to find the perimeter of a figure which is composed of pieces of the figures that we're familiar with. So these, these figures I'm talking about are the composition of other figures, like this one. You see, this is, this is not a rectangle and it's not a circle. It has a circular top and kind of a rectangular bottom, it looks like. And we're asked to find the perimeter of it. Now just make sure that we understand that perimeter means the distance around the edge. So if we're starting from this point and we go all the way around the edge and we add the sides, then that would give us the perimeter. So that's the general idea. And we want to follow that general idea in going through the calculation. And there are a lot of ways of, of performing the calculation. Some people like to use a formula for this, and we can conjure up a formula for this, no problem. Or we can just do the arithmetic involved. Now here's what's important to realize though, that if this side is 12 meters, that the side opposite will also be 12 meters. So this is 12 as well. And if, this, if it's 8 meters right here, then it's 8 meters right here. And we need that in order to figure out this part of the figure, that part of the perimeter. Okay, so here, here's how we might go about it. We might say, well, you know, I kind of like, I like the idea of using a formula. So let's, let's figure one out. Perimeter would be, well, considering this, these three pieces of a rectangle, we might say it's the length of the rectangle plus the width of a rectangle plus another length. Oh, I could consolidate this into 2L plus W if I wanted to. And then plus the half of the circumference of a circle. So it's one half circumference or one half pi times diameter. You see, now I have a complete uh, formula for the calculation. But you don't have to do this, but it's just a, an option for you. If you just want to add these three sides, you see as kind of one calculation, just add uh, 12 and 8 and 12, you see, and then, and then keep in mind that sum and then make the calculation for uh, half of the circumference over to the side and then add them together, that's perfectly all right too. Whatever way you'd like to think about it is okay. But if, we, if we're using the formula, here's what we'd do. Uh, L is 12, you see, plus 8, plus 12, plus 1 half pi. Now let's use 3.14 for pi. And the diameter, well, let's see, if it's 8 meters here, then it would be 8 meters across here. And so this then would be uh, 8. I want to make sure I'm using diameter and not radius here. I, I want to make sure I'm using the right idea. You see, it's the, the pi times diameter part. This is the part that is the circumference of the whole circle. And I want half of that circumference. So that's why I'm using one half pi times diameter. All right, so that's the idea. All right, let's slide back over here and, and do some adding. It's P equals 12 and 8 is 20. 20 and 12, that's 32. So all of this business is 32. And now let's turn our attention over here. One half times 3.14 times eight. Now I can easily take half of eight. You see half of eight is four. Or I can say two and a two, one, two and eight goes four. And now I have four times 3.14. Well, let's see, can I multiply that in my head? I think I can. Four times four, 16, carrying one. Four times one, four, and one, five. Then four times three, 12. 
and I want two digits to the right of the decimal. Oh, that's here. So I'm adding and adding these two. It is 32 and 12. Well, I might need to go over to the side to do this. You see, I might need to go over and say 32 plus 12.56. And adding, I get 44.56. Let me put that under here, 44.56. And a unit belongs here. Oh, it's meters. So there's my perimeter. Now, the other way to think about it is like this. Uh, I, I, could, I could say, okay, I want to find the perimeter. What if I take and calculate the straight sides right here? Uh, the straight sides, oh, that's 12, 8, and 12. You see, this gives me that 12 and 8 is 20, and then 12 would be 32. So that's 32 meters. And now the half circle part. You see, and I'm keeping my, my work organized. I keep it organized with the formula, but I can keep it organized just using an arithmetic approach too. So for the half circle, I'm going to figure that the circumference is that, uh, actually it's half of the circumference of the circle. I better write it like that. I can even say one half circle equals. So you make just make it very practical like this. One half of the circle is one half, I'm gonna jam myself up over here, but on the other side it would be one half of pi times diameter. And then you fill into this and figure that part of it out and add it to this other rascal over here and you have the entire perimeter. So there are just a couple of ways, a couple of good ways to uh, organize the work. Take a look at this figure. Now in this one, again, we want the perimeter and we can come up with some kind of formula, I suppose, but I think it's just easier to just look at it as a practical, uh, what do we need to add, you see, to get the result. So this is five, that's five, this is five, that's five, and then we have this semicircle here uh, for this part of it. Now it's seven meters across here, but it certainly isn't seven meters along the curve, and we want to add the curve. If we want perimeter, you see, we're adding five and five and five and five, and then we want this half of the circumference idea. So once again, it is, we're going to add one half of pi times diameter. Now, let me, I'm going to show you in this problem another replacement for pi. We've been using 3.14, but in this problem, and sometimes when fractions are involved, it's a little easier to use a different uh, approximation for pi. Rather than the decimal approximation, there is one that, uh, that is fractional, and it's 22 over 7. 22 over 7, that's what we're going to replace here. But for right now, let's just go through it this way. So we have perimeter then is 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5. That's 5 times 4, that's 20. So that's 20 plus, now I'm going to replace the 1 half pi is 22 over 7 times the diameter. Oh, I look back over here, oh, it's 7. And now away I go with, uh, with figuring it out. This 7 can cancel with that one because after all, this is 7 over understood 1. So those 7s can go out. And oh, happy day, we have another cancellation here with the 2, 2 into 2, 1, 2 into 22, 11. So we have 11 here plus 20, oh, that's 31. So the perimeter is 31 meters. Here's a word problem. What is the perimeter of a standard piece of computer paper that measures 8.5 inches by 11 inches? 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. Well, let's see. Perimeter is... It, it's rectangular, you see, so we use the formula for finding the perimeter of a rectangle. Perimeter is 2L plus 2W, and now replace the letters with numbers. We have 2 times the length is 11, plus 2 times the width is 8.5. Now, we can use 8.5 like this using the mixed number, or we can use 8.5. It really doesn't make any difference in the outcome of the problem. I'm going to use 8.5 here just to show the variation. 2 times 11, 22, and then plus 2 times 8.5. Let's see, what is this? 2 times 5 is 10. 
2 times 8 is 16 and 1 17. So one digit to the right of the decimal, so that's 17. All right, now 22 plus 17 is what we're doing. Let's see, 7 and 2, 9. 2 and 1, 3, so 39, and a unit belongs here, and it's inches, so 39 inches, then, is the perimeter of the paper. If fencing costs $4.75 per foot, how much will it cost to fence a rectangular lot that is 108 feet wide and 240 feet long? Well, we have two things to figure out here. We need the uh, the amount of the perimeter. We need a number for the perimeter, and we figure that out using a formula. And then we need to figure the cost, and the cost is figured by taking the cost per foot and multiply by the number of feet of fencing that we have. Well, let's figure the uh, amount of fencing that we have. It's uh, a rectangular lot, so we use the formula for the perimeter of a rectangle. Perimeter is 2L plus 2W. Remember, these two steps are predetermined. So we write the formula and then we replace within it L is 240, the width is 108. 2 times 240 is 480, 2 times 108 is 216. Adding here, we find the perimeter to be 696 feet. And that 696 feet of fencing is needed for this project. Now, we, now we turn our attention to the cost idea. It's for every one of these 696 feet, we're spending $4.75. So to figure out the total cost, we take the total amount of fencing and we multiply by the cost per foot. Now, there needs to be, and in some problems, you might bump into a situation where you don't have an agreement in the units involved. Notice that we have so many feet of fencing and the cost is in cost per foot. If the fencing turned out to be in yards, for example, we would need to change it into feet in order to have that kind of agreement. All right, but, uh, so that's kind of an important consideration in some problems. So we take the number of feet of fencing that we need, multiply by the cost per foot of fencing. Multiplying, we find the result to be $3,306 for the cost of the fencing.